We are watching a powerful upper level low really is trying to get its act together this morning across the Texas panhandle. That is causing the air mass to split in the upper atmosphere. A weaker piece of energy is going to be shifting off to the northeast, but a stronger piece of energy as the air diverges further to the south. That's going to tap into a lot of high water vapor content pulling in from the Gulf of Mexico. You can see this convective complex is really starting to blow up across areas of the Wichita Falls region, a lot of lightning, and that is the beginning stages of a mesoscale convective system that will be amplifying as we head deeper into the morning into the afternoon with very high winds and a lot of heavy rainfall with excessive flooding into areas of central and southeast Texas. It's going to tap into this energy right here. This is your PWAP values. May is already the wettest month. And now we're talking another convective complex is going to tap into this very high water content values approaching the three inch per hour range. You can see the air mass splitting. So you've got a piece of energy that's going to be lifting northeast a little bit lighter amounts, but the stronger piece of energy will be diving southeast. And as you get further into central Texas, you get a lot of purples start showing up. That's tapping into that two inch per hour. Once you get into that southeast region, now we're tapping into almost three inches per hour rainfall rates and set up the stage for a very, if not life-threatening flash flooding event later on this afternoon into the evening. It is tapping into this air mass. I mean, this is the precipitation over the next last 30 days, folks. This area has been inundated. So all the areas that you see in the brown shaded areas, that's typically below average, what you've seen in the last 30 days as far as your precipitation anomalies. But anywhere you see the highlighted in the green, that is above average. And especially for those areas that's highlighted into the blue region, now we're talking three, four, five inches above average, which you would typically see this time of year. But look at these amounts down there in Texas, five, if not over 10 inches above average which you would typically see and that is the cause of con concern folks because this this uh you know ground is completely saturated and we've got another powerful system that's going to be coming in so right now it's getting its act together this morning the spc it does highlighted the elevated enhanced risk for severe storms we've got the convective complex that's highlighted across the wichita falls region this morning this is going to be diving east, southeastward into the morning hours, into the afternoon, into the early evening time frame with a mesoscale convective system. Typically, those are very high wind producers and very heavy rain producers. Yes, they can produce some larger hail and an isolated tornado spin up is not out of the question. But the main culprit from this is going to be Boeing segments that's going to highlight some 50, 60, almost 70 mile per hour wind gusts at times. But the torrential heavy rain, as it taps into those very high water content values, and this is getting serious, folks, because the Weather Prediction Center has issued that moderate, if not high risk for some of these areas. I showed you the, the precipitation that's fallen over the last 30 days. This, this ground is completely saturated, so this is the last thing they need with additional inches of rainfall, and it could get serious down there into southeast Texas for those areas into the Huntsville region, Lufkin, Natchitoches, in those areas in southeast Texas, they have, it's a very rare high risk. This is only issued on 4% of the days, folks. This is life-threatening flash flooding, especially with all the saturated soils that's that's been inundated this area. And now we're talking another 5, 8, if not some isolated foot totals is probably not out of the question with two, three inch per rainfall rates at times if you can see this convective complex so right now it's highlighted over wichita falls but by the time we get into the noon time frame this is an earlier event this is during the day this is going to be over school and this is going to be over you know rush hour traffic too so that's hitting a large populated air mass with very heavy rain the, the darker the colors the very you know the more heavier rain it's going to be producing but also you could get some isolated Boeing segments of the as the winds start to bow out at ahead of this convective complex. But the thunderstorms are going to be numerous, but the heaviest amounts are going to be further south into central Texas, down there in San Angelo, into the Waco region, through Austin, and that is going to be diving southeastward 
through through the daylight daylight hours into the early evening time frame, setting setting the stage for an excessive flash flooding setup across with training convective storms as we get deeper into the afternoon. And so look at some of these precipitation totals, folks, right? So this is the latest high resolution guidance that updates every single hours, but it's pretty concerning that we're spitting out these totals across this region. All these areas in red, easily two, three, four, if not six inches of rainfall. But once you get down there in Southeast Texas, yes, very concerning. Some isolated totals could pick up a foot of rain on top of everything that they've seen as of late. And that convective complex just continues to race across. So we'll have the uh, the, the weaker system that I mentioned that will lift, be lifting further northeast, lighter rain amounts through portions of Kentucky into Tennessee, back in through Indiana. But further to the south, you have that more elevated convective complex as we get into Friday that will move into Louisiana and back into Mississippi at that time frame with very high winds and very heavy rainfall moving back into those areas on Friday. So if we break it down for you, here's the setup. So yes, you got very lighter amounts with you know less severe threat as this, this northern complex shifts northeast, but the main system is the mesoscale convective system that will likely dive southeast and then turn an easterly direction once it heads into Louisiana, but this whole area could get inundated with very high winds and some larger hail, but especially the very heavy rain that's going to be impacting this area over the next 24 to 36 hours is very concerning uh, as we move forward. And look at some of these winds that are kind of estimated on some of these high resolution guidances. This is the mesoscale convective system that's right now highlighted west of the Wichita Falls region. You can see the darker reds there really starting to get its act together down there in central Texas. Those could be producing 50, 60, upwards to 70 mile per hour wind gust. As we head into Louisiana, they don't let up, folks. And you see these ribbing, or these ribs start to show up. Those are those Boeing segments. So not out of the question of the next 48 hours, this whole line could easily get some 50, 60, 70, maybe even some isolated 80 mile per hour wind gust is not out of the question with that mesoscale convective system that will just be racing across, diving southeastward, and then moving more eastbound along the I-10, I-20, at sometimes I-30 corridor with all those heavier rains and the higher wind gusts that will be in, into that region. But as we head into Saturday, now that convective complex is now gonna be situated over areas of Alabama, back into the Florida Panhandle, into Georgia, into areas of South Carolina. It's probably gonna lose a little bit of its steam by then, but nonetheless, they still could be picking up more heavy rain across that region. And right now, this SPC does have that marginal risk. This could go up to a little bit of a slight risk, but nonetheless, I think it's definitely gonna be a lot less uh, impactful than what we're gonna be seeing today for those areas in Texas and to Louisiana with that convective complex that will be moving across during the day on Saturday. So if you break this thing down for you, as far as the precipitation goes between now and the weekend, yeah, it's been pretty wet, folks. This whole area across the eastern two thirds of the US and especially further south has just been inundated with systems one after another. It's been very dry across the middle of the country and it's also been also drier across the central plains as well. But that's likely going to change as we head into, you know, next week. So as we transition into that Sunday time frame, that's the beginning stages of a pattern change that will likely take fold. So here's the overall setup. So once this system moves across the, out in the eastern seaboard, then we've got ridging starting to come back. We've got the southwest winds that's going to bring all those record temperatures down there in Mexico back into portions of Texas. And that will bring the warmth across this region, across the middle of the country. But look what happens, folks. We've got another trough that's going to be diving in from the northwest. That's cooler anomalies, right? Tapping into that warmer air mass and you setting the stage for that battle zone again. But this time, it's likely going to be starting to set up across the central plains with their renewed severe threat as we head into Sunday, but especially as we get going into early next week, while much of the south starts to dry out under that ridging of high pressure, 
And then yes, we have a, another system, another cooler pocket aloft will be coming in on the backside, reinforcing that severe threat across the central plains as we get deeper into the middle of next week. So if we take a look at the setup for Sunday and into Monday, you can see those temperatures really starting to amplify and elevate. Yeah, further south yesterday, did you actually see Key West down there and broke a, you know, tied an all-time heat index record of 115 degrees feels like. That's crazy stuff. And especially for the May record, it shattered it by 17 degrees. That is oppressive, folks. That's the heat. That's all the water. <laughs> and then you got the south winds pulling in just, you know, very high heat index values. So these are actually temperatures, right? Well under the triple digits. Now you're going to compound that that all those higher dew points going to be associated with it. So yes, we have a lot of heat going to be building in from the south, and that's going to create more of a kind of a heat dome, you know, further south as well, while we have those cooler anomalies coming in from the, the Pacific Northwest, and that will likely set the stage for a battle zone starting to take shape on the beginning stages on Sunday. So here's the setup for Sunday. We always got to watch these areas of low pressure with the cool front that highlights across the eastern seaboard. So anytime you get a low pressure center, remember, we're going into hurricane season, folks. I mean, it essentially starts June 1st. We're not that far off. So anytime you get a low pressure out there, you always have to look be on the uh, uh, you know, be on high alert if, if that's going to be spinning up a little low level center, if, if not. But nonetheless, it's still going to bring some some rain showers across the Carolinas and some cooler anomalies as well. While much of the ridging will start to build across Texas and much of the south, then we've got the overrunning setup with the with the cooler anomalies coming in from the northwest and the battle zone taking shape. It's likely starting to originate with a 997 low pressure center highlighted across western Kansas, western Nebraska. And I think that will start to amplify as we head into Monday and Tuesday of next week so if you look at some of the ensemble guidance going forward as we head into monday and tuesday yeah we've got a deepening low pressure right deepening low pressure that's highlighted across the plains the more or less texas and much of the south i think is going to be starting to dry out while the shift in the overall severe threat pushes further north because these systems kind of have to go up and over that ridging and it's likely going to be taking place across the central plains with an area low pressure originating in western Kansas and western Nebraska, and then really starting to get its act together, shifting northeast, highlighted across Missouri, back into Iowa, through Illinois, and even into Wisconsin as we head into that Tuesday time frame. And even going to Wednesday, I think the severe threat will shift even further north and northeast, highlighted across Illinois, uh, Indiana, likely probably even Ohio by then, and even a little bit further south as we head into portions of Tennessee and Kentucky. So if we break this thing down for you on the setup for Tuesday, you can really kind of see what we're talking about, right? So right now you have that convective system that will be moving across. You'll have that low pressure center that's going to be draped across this region for a couple of days that will bring the cooler anomalies for the eastern seaboard here. But the southwest winds will be pumping in that very warm air has to go over those record high temperatures in Mexico that will lift those temperatures further north and bring those higher temperature anomalies and swinging across the middle of the country and much of the south there while we have much of the northwest continuing to cool off and of course we always have that battle zone that we have to watch out for across the middle of the country with that clash in temperatures that will set the stage for unfortunately more severe storms so if we break it down for you Here's the setup right now. So we have the convective complex that will be moving across this area into on Saturday, but a reinforcing shot as much of the south starts to dry out for Sunday as the low pressure center will be shifting further north and the storm placement has to go up and over that ridge. Now we're talking for those areas into Kansas, into Nebraska, will be into the middle of the severe threat. That will only likely intensify as that low pressure center intensifies across or, uh, into uh, Missouri there, as well as into Iowa. And I think even Tuesday could be even a more significant day as much of that colder air starts to come in from the Northwest. We've got more heat, all right? More heat building from the South. And that's gonna set the stage for likely an elevated risk for a high impact day for severe storms 
across areas of Kansas into Missouri, as well as into Iowa, back into Illinois. And yeah, not, adding, not even out of the question that could shift into Wisconsin and back into uh, Michigan. And then that would swing over with a mini, mini little cool front that will finally move, move a little bit further off to the southeast, but still likely will have to probably deal with capping concerns further south, will shut down any severe threat that's, that tries to elevate. But further to the north, it presses into Kentucky, back into Illinois, back into Indiana, as well as Ohio. And that wouldn't take place likely until Wednesday time frame. So we got a lot to talk about. I'll keep you posted on this channel. Make sure to like this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and catch me next update. Wire protect you before and after the story.